G'day one and all, I'm Southpaw Racer. This is a super serious track guide to the historic street track in the city of Pau in France. The Grand Prix de Pau is a storied and prestigious event on the single-seater feeder series calendar, with a history stretching back nearly 90 years. Name a motor racing legend and they've probably raced, if not won, at Pau. And that's quite an achievement, because unlike the Teletubby of similar name, this place is anything but soft and cuddly. When I say this is an old-school street circuit, I frickin' mean it. The layout, which from above resembles a skydiving ghost, has remained unchanged since 1935. And so, it carries with it all the pitfalls and perils that come with parking your 21st century ass on the seat of yesteryear. The lap begins on the start-finish straight, because why wouldn't it? And as soon as you cross the line, you're confronted by the flat-out Turn 1. Beware of feral safety cars exiting the pits right in front of you. It could happen to anyone. Just ask Franz Engstler. Get on the brakes for turn two, then midway through the hairpin, it's a second gear one by the way, realize that you haven't compensated for the sudden grade change at the apex. This bump will overload your front tires and cause you to understeer into the barrier, if the curbs don't get you first. More on those later. On another note, check out this old photo. I'm almost certain that this is what is now turn two. And I gotta say, it feels like you're driving a tram around here with how hard it is to pass. There's only two straights on this course, and you're looking at the second one. At least there's plenty to look at. This being an old French city, the surroundings are unsurprisingly beautiful. There's also only two easy overtaking opportunities, from what I can see anyway. Turn two, which we've left far behind, and turn three, which is coming up next. You brake surprisingly late for this second gear hairpin, and you kind of need to enter wide anyway. It tightens up just a little on exit. Fortunately, the curve in the road helps you get on the right trajectory for the slowest turn on the track, lycée. That's the French word for high school, and the corner is called that because, well, that's a high school, right there. Lycée Louis Batou, to be exact. But I find there's also a deeper, more metaphorical meaning to the name. Just like high school, some love it, some hate it. You gotta do your homework. There'll be plenty of distractions. You'll probably embarrass yourself a few times. But as long as you take it slow and don't stress too hard, you'll be fine and you can move on to better things later. All you need to do is keep it off the curbs and... Oh, yeah, great. Wonderful. Fantastic. Let's try that again. All you need to do is keep it off the curbs and... Ah, oh, f*** me. All you need to do is keep it off the curbs and everything's gonna be okay. Poor exit because you were pussyfooting it on the accelerator doesn't matter. At least you're still moving forward, which is what really counts around here. That corner is followed up by two fast sweepers that take us around the edge of the Parc Beaumont. The left-hander is flat out, the right-hander you need to brush the brakes a little. It sounds dead easy when you put it that way, and yeah, the road itself isn't that difficult to traverse. It's what's on either side of it that's the hard part. If only every corner on every track in the world had these urban plateaus lining their edges. Just imagine how much easier a steward's job would be when it comes to track limits. It's self-policing. Try to cut the inside, you're gone. Try to cheat the exit for a better run out, you're gone. Try to force another driver wide, you're both gone. F1 would have been so much simpler in 2021. I'm just being facetious. Business as usual, I guess. Just keep the wheel pinned at 45 degrees or so to the right, stay near the middle of the road, and you're golden. Until you get to another heavy braking zone. And this is where it really sinks in why regional Formula 3 are the fastest cars that race here nowadays. Remember how in the last Super Serious Track Guide I said Qatar has a few oh god what do I do corners? Well the entirety of the rest of the lap at Po is an oh god what do I do sector. Let's start with the chicane. Yes, it has the only two curbs on the lap you can actually straddle without dying most of the time. But you better hope you haven't carried too much speed out, because from this point, every corner is affected by the one before it. The chicane leads right into a downhill left, with the death curbs making a very quick return. A narrow entry spells certain doom, as you'll inevitably understeer into the barrier. If you made it out the other side, your next treat is the final hairpin, Buisson. You must keep it tight on exit. 
I repeat, you must keep it tight on the exit. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. The following S-Bend is a sequence you know can be flat out in your heart of hearts, but no matter how much you compromise the exit of Buisson to open it up, those goddamn vertical curbs induce just enough lingering doubt to stay your right foot. Walls? <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need walls. Also, it's easy to get carried away and forget about slowing down for the final chicane. I'd like to take an opportunity to pour one out for my direct drive wheel brothers and sisters, because this f***ing thing, Jesus Christ, it's a boulder. And in the modern day, it's the flattest it's ever been. This is what it looked like in the late 80s. Overtaking? Don't even think about it. You so much as look at this curb the wrong way, and it'll set you up for a hot date with the barriers. If you get the exit wrong, there's nothing left to save you. It's foot to the floor from here on out. Ease left, then right, and you're back on the start-finish straight. I don't hate Poe, but I'm not that interested in doing an in-lap, so if you don't mind, I'm just gonna... Jesus. Well, if there's anything to learn from that experience, this track doesn't care about earning your respect. It's already got a century's worth from everyone else, and as sure as hell isn't giving any back. This video was made possible by everyone listed here, as well as my super serious supporters, Adam Miller, Callum Crayston, CJ Flash 99, Jack Moore, Ira Felberg, Jay Kennedy, Michael Hollinshead, Pub With No Beer, The Original Sticks, Thomas Clarendon Blair, Thomas Dandridge, and Tom Hins. Every one of my patrons gets to vote on the next Super Serious Track Guide at the start of every month. If you're interested in supporting me and having a say on what track I roast next, become a patron today at patreon.com forward slash Southpaw Racer. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you at the first corner.